The Kumo V8 Touring Car Series has grown to more than just a place to race for old V8 supercars. Instead, it's a place where new stars can hone their V8 craft, while others can live the dream and race at a high level in Australia's top touring car category. The Kumo V8 Series brings ex-cars from teams like Triple Eight, Walkinshaw, Brad Jones Racing and more together in the same series, to the point where some even run their original liveries. And like it was when these cars raced wheel to wheel in the main game, this is classic Holden versus Ford touring car racing at its very best. He's working hard, Brian Simpson, not only on his driving, but on the Malala flies there as well. He had a great drive on Saturday to take the race one victory and starts from the front row of the grid for race two in the Kumo V8 Touring Car Series. For 2014, a great build, Tony Darberto, and this series has grown and evolved over the years, and there's some great ex-main game V8 supercar machinery as we confirm the grid for you as well. Absolutely. Uh, Justin Ruggier there with the Eccleston Motorsport VZ Commodore, one car that I'm very familiar with. I actually won the Development Series Championship with that car, so a great car in the field. And some ex Brad Jones Racing, some Walkinshaw, HRT and dealer team cars in the grid as well. We'll talk more about that over the course of this weekend. We're underway, race two of the 2014 season, and it's a good start from Simpson. He's launched oh. off the line, a bit of contact there. Yeah, Hunter squeezed out wide from one of the ex Brad Jones Racing cars. Might have been Matt Palmer in the mix there just squeezed out wide. So everyone through turn two nicely. There's Matt Charter starting from the back. Difficult run in race one. Was competitive though, but forced to the back of the field. He'll be one to watch coming through the field. Dontis now. He's having a bit of a look up the inside now. This is Craig's first weekend this weekend. And uh, he's uh, he's adjusted to the car. He's uh, used to the ute. And uh, he can't believe the power and the braking cap capability of the Vet Supercar. Very different things to drive as well as we run through the infamous sweeper for the first time. And up into the northern hairpin. Great overtaking opportunity under brakes. And that's what Steve Briff is doing. Down the inside of Dantas, the Poco Racing Commodore. This is an ex Paul Morris Motorsport car. Briff with new sponsorship on that car this season. And looking forward to a big campaign. He's an early mover in race two. Down the inside here. He's having a bit of a crackle. Bit of a late move there. On Chris Delson. <laughs> Lucky not to make contact. i tell you what, he's having a good crack. He's... Uh, trying to make his way through the field and this is a really tricky part of the track here. These cars at Mal are probably not that well suited. Uh, they're probably a little bit big but uh, it definitely makes a big challenge and as a driver you're working really really hard to keep these cars on track as we see. Delsmet running wide. The track there. One of the quickest corners on the racetrack. They don't actually count the kink on the back straight really as a corner because the arrow on the grip these cars have got is pretty much flat but Turn one, tricky corner, a lot of camber on that, and they flick the cars in, it's easy to run off wide. Almost three wide here. It's good racing, isn't it, in the early stages. That's Matt Charter coming through the field. He's had great pace this weekend, yeah. Matt. He's, uh, he's trying to make amends for a little bit of a poor start, but uh, I'm sure as the race goes on, he'll come through the field. He's having to go here at Dontis. Qualified second to TD, less than a tenth of a second behind Ryan Simpson, who was the form driver at the end of the 2013 championship. Gets it done down the inside on Lyle Kern. So that's a good move. Coming out of that hairpin there around the left hand. Very, very tricky corner. Um, the car's all loaded up to the right. It's very hard to get the power down. As you see there, car just kept putting a wheel off of the exit. It's extremely fast coming into this uh, this right hand. They have big brakes and a very good passing Whoa. opportunity. Here we go. Jared McLeod gets into his V8 Ute Racing rival, Craig Dontis. <laughs> They're meant to be mates off track. I know. It turns him rounds. In just turn eight. to start it up there. So Jared, a real last minute deal to get in the second of the Matt Palmer STR truck body cars, ex Brad Jones Racing Falcons, the two of them getting up to speed. They've had some ECU issues with that car and Rip some low down inside. tire. Good move. Great move. He's on a charge early. This is a good stint for Briff. Gets it pretty sideways right. on the exit. So he just overcooked it a little bit there on the entry and uh, he tried to keep the car on track but ran a little bit wide. And, uh, just lost that spot again. This place is all about braking, isn't it? As we go back and have a look at the start, just uh, three into two really didn't go at turn one, and McLeod gets into Shane Hunt and squeezes him off the road. And this is what happened with McLeod and Dontis. Put your driver's standards observer hat on there. What do you think? <laughs> look, I mean, I think, uh, you know, Craig was sort of mind his own business there a little bit, and Gerald just gave him a little tap. I don't think there's a lot in it, but you know, sometimes the cars just they go past that point of no return, and uh, Jared couldn't get out of it, and then Craig just spun the car. So it wouldn't be a lot of damage on the car, but obviously he's ruined uh, Donaldson's race, unfortunately. 
qualified eighth, Craig and raced to sixth in race one, which I thought was a pretty solid debut in a V8 touring car after plenty of years running in the Ute. Works full time for the Clipson 500 Adelaide in their marketing department and uh, heavily behind the scenes of the biggest V8 supercar race on the calendar in Australia and certainly one of the biggest events in South Australia. And I think really reveling in the opportunity to get behind the wheel of something different at Malala and have a skip. Well, I mean, after organising uh, one of the biggest races of the year, wouldn't you want to get behind one of these awesome beasts? Absolutely. Back on board with Briffer, Matt Charter in behind. Great qualifying from Charter, almost, almost got past Ryan Simpson for pole. And did a superb job, missed out by less than a tenth of a second. And Rougiat was third in the Eagleston Motorsport car. So very, very close to the top three, covered by less than a tenth in qualifying. And then a few tenths back to Steve Briffer, who was pretty pacey. And he now looks down the inside of Palmer, but can't quite get it done. In fact, Charter will get it done and fires down the inside and gets that position away. Feisty racing. Very feisty. They're, uh, they're having a good crack under brakes. Um, like I said, it's, it's a tricky track. Big oh. on brakes. <laughs> Charter. Charter putting a wheel off there. From my experience being here, you know, big, big time uh, under brake circuit, uh, and a, you get a really good power down out of the out of the corner to try and maximise the speed down the straight. So that's one thing that we used to work on quite a lot here. And you tell people Malala, it's a couple of straights and some hairpins, but each of the hairpins are completely different too. Turn three, southern hairpin, really late apex, and you've got to a feed the power one. on. That's yeah. a really tough one. You, you sort of turn into the corner and just keep going around here. So uh, it's a tricky line there, and sometimes you can, if you actually dive up the inside, you can make the pass, but it's uh, not an easy spot. Down the inside goes Charter, so he'll get that done at Northern. One of the best well, overtaking opportunities, Briffer. He's having a go. Tries to take advantage of it, but can't do it. Second year in the category, former production car racer. So raced HSVs and Holden Commodores in production car racing. So similar in theory but i guess pretty different in execution yeah i mean it's similar sort of size vehicle and it'd be sim you know, used to racing these sort of cars but uh Fiat supercar is very unique cars to drive and you see that when even europeans come out uh, they've got a heap of experience and they just uh, can't adapt quick enough but these guys are having a really good go and uh, it's really good to see some of these older cars out there still going really really quick and you'll notice on the windscreen of all these cars tony an s or an h and that designates the class they're running in, whether they're running a sequential shifter or the, the old school H pattern shifter. So sequential boxes allowed in the category for the first time last year. Some cars have updated, some elected to run as they were. And Ryan Simpson, for example, runs a sequential shifter in his ex Craig Lowndes 888 Ford. But Matt Charter has got the Hollinger box. And this is another look of that pretty exciting dice down in the final complex. And that was Charter hanging onto it in a straight line. Just dropping a couple of wheels off into one of the quicker corners on the circuit. Ripper now is having a go at the back there of Palmer. He's come quite a bit of V8 supercar history and purchased by Scott Loadsman after that. Run a couple of times in the Kumo Series 6 before Steve Briffer bought it at the start of last season. And he's doing good things. So that's the thing with this category. It's not just the current spec drivers were jumping in. It's the history of the cars and the fact that some of them elect to run it in their period liveries as well. Matt Palmer's car is not the exact Team BOC livery, but yeah. it's, it's... It represents, yeah. yeah, when BJR drove the, the car in the, in the championship there. Like Craig Dante's car, you can pick what team that used to be. Super cheap auto racing Commodore as this fight continues. Palmer doing everything he can to keep Ripper behind. His mirrors will be absolutely full of Ripper. Here we go, now's the spot. Bright yellow Commodore. Just behind the red and blue Falcon. Northern Hairpin's got to be the go. But he seems to struggle with the run out of turn three. Better this time. Didn't have the oversteer. Didn't get on the power so early. Through that kink. That is a fast kink in real life. That's not easy flat. Here he goes down the inside. Perfect manoeuvre. That's get a textbook Malala overtake Absolutely. right there. Absolutely get a good exit out of here otherwise Palmer's going to get in again. So Palmer gets the switch back and runs side by side with the Commodore on the exit of six and down into the next braking zone. Now he's on the correct side of the road to retake that position. This is a great fight between two guys racing very clean Tony but uh, racing very hard as well. Absolutely and that's great racing you know they didn't touch a panel didn't uh, bend a fender but uh, they're definitely going uh, at it really hard. Fight fifth and sixth, Ryan Simpson continues to lead. 
Ruzzi a second. Bit of understeer there. Keeping pace with the leader. Gap fairly consistent. Couple of seconds first to second. And Matt Charter running in third. You can see the leaders going around the back of the circuit through the king as this fight continues. Right, we're just glued to this fight. We, we don't even know who's winning at the no, moment. It's a good fight, isn't <laughs> it? I can tell you Simpson's out in front, but he's gone. We don't need to look at cars running on their own when we've got a battle like this. And actually, this is bringing Simon Tavernor into the equation as well, Tony. He's in behind this group. The two-time saloon car champion, so the six-cylinder Holtz and Fords that run with the Shannons Nationals and have done so for quite some time. He's taken the step up recently and bought the Kumo V8 touring car. And he's gone very, very well. Qualified within a second of pole, which I thought was really impressive. And he's closing in on these fights as these two slow themselves up they, while they're battling. Yeah, these guys are uh, slowing themselves up big time um, and just allowing the other cars to catch up to the back of them. So they've got to be a little bit careful because uh, Palmer there, he'll, uh, he'll become you know, a lot of pressure from behind. He's charter working on Chris Smurton. So this is a little bit further up the road. So this will be for third place. Smurden, the inaugural champion in the Kumo V8 series, what seems like an age ago now, back in 2008, in that ex Stone Brothers Racing James Cook. Dives down the inside. Good move. Sold the dummy, didn't he? Went to Very the outside, good. flicked it back. Smurden would never see him come in there. He thought he had him covered. Down the inside. Smurden's done plenty of laps at this place way back into the Australian Touring Car Championship privateer days when he'd run a privateer VS Commodore teamed up with uh, the expat Aussie Charlie Cox at Bathurst a couple of times. It was always a fairly high-profile combination. He was one of the leading privateers back in the day in the early days of V8 supercar racing. I think that might have been a little car. bit before my time. Just a little bit, you think? <laughs> but he's a great contender. Raced Utes for some time as well and uh, has second on the all-time winners list in Kumo V8 as well. Plenty of success in this category. Just dropped the spot now to Matt Charter. He gets back to third. And just up the road, you can see the VZ Commodore of Ruzia in second, trying to keep pace with our race leader. Here's what happened in that overtaking maneuver. This is what it looked like on board with Briffa. So just got down the inside while we were watching Charter and Smurden go at it. This was a great fight, too, between Simon Tavernor and Matty Palmer. They swapped positions a couple of times. Unfortunately, just after Tavernor got past Matt Palmer, he ran off the road down at the southern hairpin. Gathered it up okay, however, while recovering, locked the rears and ended up off the road at turn seven. He would recover and has rejoined the race. So there's the leader. We mentioned the livery on this car, CD, and this was uh, Craig Lowndes' Triple Eight car. It made its debut actually about 60 k down the road at the Gibson 500 in 2008. And uh, Craig drove it, uh, drove it from there. Simpson purchased the car last year. It's still run by Mick Ritter and the Sonic Motor Racing team, but changed liveries in the off season to go back to its. There's my old girl. Yeah. The VZ, what a car. The VZ, I mean, I used to love that car. Fond memories winning the, the Dunlop Series Championship. But uh, i tell you what, uh, Justin Ruggi has done an absolute amazing job this weekend. Uh, first weekend in the Championship and uh, hasn't driven a V8 supercar before. So very impressive. Six-time state, two-time national karting champ. Very active on the iRacing scene, the online racing, which is seemingly a bit of a trend these days. You move on from computer gaming into road racing but uh, Eggleston Motorsport who are running and preparing that car bought it from you recently are very very excited about the potential this guy's got as you mentioned earlier qualified within a tenth of a second with the most dominant driver in Kumo V8s last year Ryan Simpson who incidentally is on his final lap just a few corners to go to what looks to be a second very very strong victory but yeah promising signs ahead for the future as he gets some more laps under his belt absolutely there and ryan simpson we saw him uh, eclipse a little in the year in the dunlop series and he was well inside the top 10 his first go there so he's driving very very well himself so that that's just a, a credit to uh, to where justin's at as well so final few corners for ryan simpson he won his 10th kumo v8 race on saturday and that was equal fourth in the old-time record books. He's now third because this is win number 11. And Simpson gets another one and takes race two at Malala. Ruzia second, continuing his very strong debut weekend. And here's Matt Charter from the back of the field. Gets himself onto the podium and importantly gets him towards the pointy end of the grid for race three. So he can try and mix it up with the leads. Yeah, great job there. And Smurden there in uh, position four. And the action man, Briffa. 
he has been in the thick of it this race and gets across the line really good result top five for Briffa just in front of Matt Palmer another strong run from the STR truck bodies car Simon Tabernor seventh despite a couple of offs in front of Chris Delsmer and over the page you'll find the V8 Ute Racing boys a little bit further back than they'd like to be in 11th and 12th but there'll be fireworks from those boys when we come back for race three.